Hello folks, this is Sula speaking, and you're watching a commentary video on League of Legends, this one featuring me playing as Morgana. And there you see briefly the score screen, and I probably should have left that up a little bit longer. Okay, in terms of what happened in the first phase, first part of this video, there was a lot of laning back and forth, a lot of farming on both sides, and there wasn't too much action sort of going back and forth. We had one kill on each team. Most of the time, I've been up here in the top lane, and I've been leaning against Roland, who's playing as Shen, and Roland's doing a very good job of farming as well, and we've been harassing back and forth. We have not been able to kill one another, and that's because, frankly, our characters are just far too beefy, and neither one of us has enough direct damage to kill the other. Shen is a tanky character. Morgana is also quite tanky, as far as... As far as, uh, as far as sort of a casting characters go on. Morgana's not like a pure spellcaster. She's uh, basically ability power support. I mean, her goal is not to get a ton of kills on the enemy team, like, say, an Annie or a, a Nivea or a Vigar or something would be. Her job is more to stun people, root them in place so that the other t characters on your team can, uh, can, you know, get the kills. And that's a nice dash by uh, Roland just to get out of my Blackpool. But again, it, it does what I'm trying to do, which is you can see he loses a lot of minion kills there because he's up harassing me. So not a bad play, but it, again, it does sort of reinforce why I'm trying to push forward against the tower. All right, anyway, going back and forth, let's see. Right now, you can see that there's just a lot of farming going back and forth between the different lanes. I've missed out on very little experience thus far in the game because I've been in the top lane almost the entire game, and I've been getting just tons and tons of experience from killing minions. Here, let's see, I was heading down to the middle lane because we were trying to set up some kind of, a, we were trying to set up a kill on the enemy team's Ash. You could see Varus Nox was in the woods, uh, but Ash scouted it out with her hawk shot, and so as soon as she saw Warwick, she just backed off behind the tower, and so that meant that we weren't going to have any chance to come in there. So that was, that was a, you know, a failed attempt, and uh, that allowed Roland to free farm a wave of minions up top. So, oh well, uh, mistaken play, but not that big a deal. You can see again, if I had been faster there, I could have shielded that with my black shield and prevented taking damage from his dagger toss there, but um, I will heal back. I heal back health every single time I, I uh, drop Morgana's Twisted Soil on a minion wave, so it's not that big a deal. You can see 32, 34, etc., etc., so I continue to get health back from killing these. As far as how I'm building Morgana, I do want to go for an initial Rod of Ages because the extra ability power is always nice. The extra health is a big deal on Morgana. I want, uh, when building Morg, you do want to build her a little bit more tanky than a lot of the other characters that rely on ability power. Here we're going to come forward to get Roland, but he sees Varus Nox coming forward and he wisely flashes out of it. So we didn't achieve anything, but we did get him to use up his flash. And I mean, granted, this isn't so high level a game that that is super important, but it's always nice when you can get someone to use up their summoner skills. And a good flash from Roland, otherwise we would have had a chance um, if Varus could have jumped on him and used the Warwick ultimate, and then I could have uh, hit him with my ultimate, the Soul Shackles, and then added a Dark Binding on top of that. And there you can see one of the problems of Dark Binding. Even though I fire it right at Roland, I end up hitting the minion next to him, so oops, that's a misplay. And uh, yeah, it's blockable by minion, so it's, it's like Blitzcrank's crank, you know, if you stand behind a minion, you can't get hit by it, that sort of thing. I guess I should also mention that the Black, that the Tormented Soil Morgana's pool, it does reduce the magic resistance of anyone who stands on it. So if enemy champs just stand in it, even if it's not doing much damage, it is lowering their magic resistance. And I think it can reduce it by up to 40 at the highest level. So uh, generally speaking, I mean, it's it's pretty obvious, but no, you don't, you don't want to stand in her black pool. So just avoid it if possible, unless you really have to for some reason. Most of the action has been taking place in the bottom lane, and no, that, that skill shot's never going to hit, so yeah, that's that's kind of stupid. Most of the action's been taking place in the bottom lane, and if I would really wish, once again, that this game had a replay feature, because then I could happily switch over to that lane and, and show you what's going on, that sort of thing, but unfortunately I can't do that. You can see that Cole has gone down to the bottom lane, and I think he's trying to set up a kill over there, or something like that. I'm not 100% not sure what he's trying to do. Up here, I keep pushing every minion wave forward. Like, I, unfortunately, I missed that that minion there. But um, as you can see, uh, it's it's tough to get those ca those uh, caster minions ag up against the tower. And maybe if I could actually hit on one of my skill shots and actually bind roll into the ground, he wouldn't be getting so much experience. But oh well. You can see I'm trying to see how much more gold I need for Rod of Ages. I'm not quite there yet. And, oh, you can see, Roland just went bottom, he used his ultimate, and now he's down in the bottom lane. I can see that, and that means that they have four champs down there in the bottom lane. Everyone is there, except for their Ash player, 
And I was initially going to come down here, but I think that... Or no, actually, I think I was heading middle lane. Oh yeah, I, I ended up going middle lane because Voice of Unreason was going to push our tower here, and so I wanted to hold this lane. And again, there's a team fight going bottom. Wish I could show that, but unfortunately I can't because the camera's locked on me. So I come down here, and I'm just going to protect this lane from being pushed uh, so that our middle tower doesn't take damage. I'm not sure if that was the right thing to do. Maybe I should have just pushed the top lane forward with them all elsewhere. But now it looks like Ash has backed off. Is she still down here? Let's see. Is she? Yep, so Ash is still down here. But now I've pushed that minion wave forward. Uh, pushed that minion wave back. And it looks like in the bottom lane we were able to hold them off in a team fight down there. Even though it was 4 against 3. I think it was 4 against... No, it was 4 against 4. Excuse me. It was 4 against 4. Because uh, Varus Nox went down there as well. So anyway, I've pushed back this minion wave. And you can see I'm still getting experience. I haven't been in a duo lane like at any point in time in this game. And there, at, because the uh, we're right up against the tower, Voice of Unreason only gets one of the three caster minions. So little things, but little things can add up to make a difference. You can see they now set Donsky, who's K playing as Kale, up to the top lane. And so he's going to be free farming a bit, but that's not that big a deal. Uh, it's, not, it's not terrible if Kale uh, gets in a little bit of extra farming. And so with Cole coming back to cover the middle lane, now I'm going to head back to top and just continue my farming. I have a big advantage. Oh, there we see Sunrise going for the blue golem buff with our clairvoyance that Termuth used, but we, we just don't have the champions in, permit, per, in uh, position to go harass him and try to steal that. If Ferris Knox, our Warwick player, was closer, we probably could have gone for that, but oh well. And now here, I'm going to stand and take aggression from the minions, but I want to do that because I didn't want them to get too close to the tower, where the tower would eat them, and then I wouldn't be able to get the gold. And oh, I miss out on that one, so poor play. Um, but anyway, I was able to get most of that minion wave, and I was able to get all the experience and most of the gold, and that's what's important. Again, getting a farmed up Morgana player is a big deal. I'm starting to get a leveling advantage, both on my team and on the rest of the team, because I've just been in a solo lane just so much throughout this game. You can see I'm level 15. If you look there on the left side, left hand side at the character portraits, you can see the other characters are lower levels than me. You can see 9, 10, 13, 10. Cole's our other solo champ, and he's only 13. So again, just the value of being in a solo lane for a long period of time really does add up. And there I managed to uh, hit Donsky. You can just see how much damage I've done to him um, because I have that 5 level advantage. Uh, his health goes down. We did pick up another kill there in the bottom lane. I didn't see it, but it's that, obviously that's a good sign. And there you can see the farming stats. I've got 150 minion kills, which is the most by quite a bit in the game. And so now I'm going to pick up a 21-minute Rod of Ages, which is pretty good. Next, I was thinking about what to buy next, and I was sort of trying to figure out because I've got a lot of, a lot of gold here. What I think maybe I should have done was just buy another Doran's Ring because I had the extra gold. And you really don't want to go back to base with like 700 gold and not spend, you know, leave yourself with a couple hundred gold. So I did pick up a couple of wards, but I probably should have just grabbed another Doran's Ring here. It's still early enough in the game that that will be helpful with the Mono Regen. There you can see the stats. Mono Regen and the extra ability power would, would, would not be meaningless. And we're still early enough in the game that that would be a useful buy. The next item that I want to purchase towards is I really want to get Zanya's ring. Zanya's is very key for Morgana because the uh, the uh, two second invulnerability is really helpful when she's using her ult. I actually think that I don't do that in this game, but in general, you you really benefit from locking locking in a couple of enemy champs with your soul shackles and then popping off Zanya's so that you're invulnerable. Oh, by the way, look at how horribly. I did against that uh, cannon minion there in terms of auto attacking. That that's that's just kind of embarrassing. We'll pretend that didn't happen. But when using Morg's ultimate, it's really helpful to be able to pop off Zanyas and make yourself untargetable while you've got enemy champs all around you. So, and of course, the ability power is helpful as well. So just a very key item. It it helps both offensively in doing extra damage and also defensively in terms of using the stasis feature while you've got your ult. Anyway, everyone else just left this lane. So I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to farm up and push this tower. And here I thought they were coming to get me, but then I threw down my ward and I realized, no, wait, they're, they're still out of position and they don't have a teleport or anything like that so yeah I'm just I'm just gonna push down this tower continue to get the experience um, because the enemy team just is not in a position to contest this and now I can go help out mid but the the advantage has already been gained here because I'm level 16 and that's that's the highest in the game right now I think Roland is 15 because he's been in a solo lane a lot but I'm a good 
four to five levels ahead of most other players in this game, and I'm approaching 200 minion kills, so I have... That farming has really put us in a strong position, and I'm sure it may have been boring to watch, but it, it really... Oh, Roland's only 14. So yeah, I mean, that it really is pretty key, and there I do manage to get in a nice binding, and there I shield myself. Oh, and I wasn't even trying to block the Ash Arrow, but as it turned out, uh, it hits me, and that's pretty key. However, even though it's two against three, we don't want to tower dive, and we can see Kale's coming in behind, so that that's a bad fight. And, um, you know, we, we might be a little bit ahead in this game, I'd say, but we're not so far ahead that we can start doing dumb stuff like diving into towers and stuff like that. There, I'm just going to poke, and hit. I managed to hit Donsky, so we're just going to get in some free damage. We don't want to charge in and fight him at the tower or anything like that, but getting in that free damage is always nice. Morg's pretty good at poking enemy champs, too, because her binding has long range, and if you can manage to bind somebody, then they're usually... That, that can put them in a pretty bad situation. And uh, if they're tugging a tower, you know, maybe nothing happens, but at the same time, maybe you can dive in and get a kill. Uh, works quite well with a champion like Xinjiao, too, because he can use his charge feature, charge in and, you know, wreck havoc, that sort of thing. Again, here you can see uh, Sunrise, has, who's been jungling for the other team. Sunrise has been doing a pretty good job of jungling, but the only the issue I would say is uh, he's managed to get himself, he's managed to get out leveled a little bit, and that's happened a lot with Sunrise. We're trying to set a trap here at the bottom. You can see there's two champs in that brush down there, but they see it. A nice hawk shot by, uh, who is it? I think it's Voice of Unreason. He's playing Ash, yeah, by Voice of Unreason. A uh, nice hawk shot reveals uh, our champ standing there, so that's not going to work out. They're not going to come forward. And you can see I'm still getting most of the minion kills. That that almost might be bad at this point in time because the other other champs on my team might need that. But, oh well. I have, the, I have Morgana's pool. I'm going to use it. So we're really sort of at a stalemate here. Both teams are sort of grouped up mid. You can see we have four or five from each each team just hanging out in the middle lane, sort of going back and forth or just kind of poking back and forth. Big time standoff here between the two teams. So what we need is we need to find we need to find some way to break this stalemate. One other thing that's noteworthy, when everybody groups up in a lane like this, the experience gets divided five ways, and people just stop leveling up very much. Um, like, wherever you are in terms of levels, you're going to stay there for quite some time. And there's our clairvoyance, reveals all five members of the enemy team are down there. One thing that we did to try to break this stalemate was you can see we have Varus Nox off running around in the other team's jungle. So he is going to slip in and start stealing some of their buffs while the other four of us hang out here in the lane. So that was actually going to be pretty key for us. One thing that allows us to do is Varus can get a little bit of extra experience that's not being divided five ways, which is going to help out. And if he can slip in and steal their lizard buff, as I think he tried to do, uh, it still is showing the lizard buff up on our minimap, so I don't know if he got it or not. But if he can actually slip in there and start stealing buffs, then that's pretty key because he denies it to the enemy team. Uh, we actually haven't done that great of a job in using our own buffs. Um, I could have benefited from getting the blue buff at times, I think that we wanted to put it on Sona, though, and let's face it, a blue buff on Sona is, is a good thing, even though Sona continues to get nerfed over and over again right now in terms of patches. Varus was heading off to the bottom lane. I'm not sure if he was trying to farm or not, but you, you can see we've got them clairvoyanced. We can see them all there, so we're not going to catch them out of guard. And here, we go after Voice of Unreason, and we get an Ash Arrow from Uberfish, and then I, get, uh, I hit her with my pool. And we missed the Sona ult, but there's Morgana's Soul Shackle. So you can see here I managed to hit on the stun. So I'm going to hit her with pool. And, uh, oh, I missed my Dark Binding, but Cole manages to clean up and get the kill. Here I'm going to, I'm desperately trying to get away. So I'm going to ghost out. And, uh, yeah, it looks like I'm going to be able to get away. So we were able to get that kill. And there's a useless flash. I don't know why I did that there. Um, so we were able to get that kill. And then we were able to pick up a second kill. Although I'm not in the fight. I'm not there to see it. I really probably should have gone back to support the team fight in case they needed me. But instead I headed up here because the lane was being pushed. And I am able to heal some, get some health back by uh, heading up here. But probably should have been with the team in any case. Oh, well. Instead I'll pick up more gold, pick up more experience, come up here and uh, benefit from that. But now that I've pushed back that wave and gotten the extra golden experience, I'm going to recall, and then I'm going to, if I remember, I'm going to start purchasing towards Zanya's, I think, because now I can pick up the needlessly large rod. All right, anyway, and then some more sight words. But we're up against the end of this video, so again, thanks for watching, and we'll finish this in part three.